Right, hello, this is going to be a, a, our starter as we look at using these new trig identities uh, to solve identities. So we're looking at identities and we're looking at the new trig ones. We're going to be using sec, we're going to be using cosec and we're going to be using cot. Uh, and uh, I want to give you an example of one here. So we'll start off with sine theta cot theta sec theta and uh, we look at that and we go oh no oh no what are we going to be able to do so when in doubt do a bit of coloring that's what i say uh, so make it look pretty this doesn't go down with examiners very well at all because they're very very grumpy so when I, they look at that they really don't like it so it's a bit of a waste of time but i like it so there Okay, so we've got our sine theta, and we're used to that. Our cot, let's turn that into 1 over tan, and then our sec is 1 over cos. And uh, now we're looking to see if we can manipulate these around. Can we move them around in any sort of way? And we can see there could be something here. Because sine theta over cos theta times 1 over tan theta, is now starting to look a little bit more interesting. Because hopefully, you will have remembered from your identities work that this particular combination of trig was going to give us... What was that? I can't hear you. That's right. Tan theta. Woohoo! And then we've got 1 over tan theta there. Hey, boom, it falls out and we get one. And, um, you know, that's what this sort of thing is about. It's just about taking some of the information we know and making it a look uh, a lot simpler. Okay, we'll have a look at a second one then. Uh, same sort of thing then, taking uh, trigonometry identities, trigonometric identities, I should say, and simplifying them. So I look over there and I've got sine theta cos theta times sec theta plus cosec theta. All right then. And uh, we're going to have a look at the way. Oh, I've lost my lid. I've lost my lid. Is the lid? Oh, I'll have to find the lid in a minute. And you, oh, look, there it is. Hey, um, looking at it, then we're going to try and find some way of making this sense. And so, still at this stage, we're happier, of course, to be working in something like sine, cos, and tan. We're not really familiar yet enough to be happy with seeing sec and cosec and cot in that sort of way. So. I'm going to expand the brackets out. We've got, uh, um, uh, you know, two functions in there. We've got two, uh, two identities in there. Uh, we've got brackets there. So I'm going to expand through. I think some of my terminology is a bit rubbish here, isn't it? So we've got sine theta, cos theta, divided by cos theta, plus sine theta, cos theta, divided by sine theta. Um, now, you can probably see ahead and you think, oh, well, why do you have to write that line? Couldn't we just uh, cancel out straight away? Well, I'm trying to make a point here, so I'm going to take my time. Also, a nice, nice chance to do a little bit of colouring. And if you look, you've got cos there, and you've got cos there, you've got sine there, you've got sine there. And then what we can do is we can come in here now then with sine theta plus cos theta uh, and that'll be lovely there's no squaring in there there's no, you know don't try and think oh that equals one because of course it doesn't it's sine theta plus cos theta that equals one so uh, that's about as far as we can take it nice aren't they i bet you're dying to have a go uh, and so i'm going to give you some to have a go with now which is the square root of cosec 
cubed theta times cot theta times sec theta. And uh, since that cosec is a problem. Um, again, uh, I well, what do we think? Uh, what should we do? Um, yeah. Yeah. Let's, so let's. We're still not really that familiar with dealing with cosec and cot and and sec. So um, the, uh, so if we go one over uh, sine cubed theta times uh, one over tan theta times one over cos theta. That doesn't seem to be giving us anything except the tan. The tan has got to be the key to this, I reckon. Uh, what do we know about tan? Sine theta of cos theta. It's sine over cos, so if we've done a reciprocal of that, if we've got one over that, what's it going to be? Yeah, flipped. Flipped? Yeah. So? Cos theta or sine theta. So yeah. now we've got cos theta over sine theta. Well, that seems now as if we've got a whole load of sine thetas, but it does also indicate that this cos theta might go. So we need a bit of yellow, a little bit of this, a little bit of this. This probably isn't going to come up on the mic because I think I'm too far away. Just turn around and kind of like shout. So if they go, yeah, what are we going to end up with? One over sine. Three theta. One over sine what? One over sine to the three theta. No. Times. No, times one yeah. over sine to I see what you're saying. Yeah, one over sine cubed theta times one over sine theta is going to give us one over sine to the four theta. Oh, yeah. And now we can square root that. And that's going to square root. Whoops. That's going to square root, root down to what? One over yeah. sine squared theta which is going to be cosec squared theta. And there it is, panning out really quite nicely. Hello. <laughs> I'm going to do question 1H of exercise 16. <laughs> so what I did was I separated it into one over sine squared theta times one over cos theta times sine squared theta over cos squared theta and the two sine squared thetas cancel out. You end up with one of the cos cubed theta, which equals set cubed theta. By Joe, it's not. Way, round of applause, number. Guys, he's ready to go. He's oh, ready to go. Oh, okay, so the question is set squared x cos 5x plus hot cosec x psi 4x. Okay, everyone following so far? Oh, yeah. Right. And then you can change that so it's 1 over cos squared x times cos to the 5x plus 1 over tan x. And if you're saying I've got a wrong line thing. Uh, 1 over sine times sine for x and then we know that 1 over tan is um, the same as 
uh, cos x over sine x. And we know that this here, cos and that, will simplify into cos 3x plus, so cos x over sine x times uh, and then the sine 4x and the sine x here will simplify into sine 3x and then these will then cancel down again so you'll get cos cubed x plus cos x times sine squared x and we know sine squared can be written as uh, 1 minus cos squared x and this gives us cos cubed x plus that thing about which is minus uh, cos cubed x uh, plus cos x and simplifying this gives you cos x <laughs> So yeah, I think you should give your name and sign off. Thank you. Hold <laughs> <laughs> oh, your hand off. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you very much. I will just add this uh, on the end. Um, a brilliant solution, but there was a slightly different way of doing it, which um, which was which was quite interesting, and that is to see that we have cos x as a common factor, so if we take the cos x out, and we have cos squared x here, plus sine squared x here, and that then gives us 1, and so we've got cos x. As to whether that is a little bit more elegant, nah, I'd put my right, I'd put my Thank <laughs> you.